morning. God, we thank you, God, that we can have fun uh, together, that we can, uh, God, also uh, learn more about you and grow together as the body of Christ. And Lord, this, this morning, we pray that you would speak to us, that you would touch our hearts, that you would reach into us. And, and, and God, help us to hear what you would want us to hear. Help us to receive what you would want us to receive, God. Pray that you touch our lives and speak to us, God. Let this be a place, Jesus, that, that reaches others for your kingdom, Lord, that, that has care and concern for other people, Lord, that, 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 that puts our arm around one another, Lord, that links arms and, and moves forward for your kingdom and for the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, and if you're in agreement, would you say amen? So guys, uh, this morning, uh, the main idea, the main thing that I want to try to convey, or if you want a title for the sermon, it's called Present, Not Presence. Present, Not Presence. And uh, how many of you guys remember when you were a kid making a list? A Christmas list, or maybe you, you sat there and you just daydreamed and you thought about all the things that would be so cool to get for Christmas. Any, am I the only one that did that, or is there any, uh, anyone else in here? Come on, you got to participate. You got you to gotta play. You got to be a part. My kids, uh, my older boys, you know, they're, they're older now, uh, but when they were younger, uh, they, would, they would make lists, and they would do something to where when the, when, uh, the, the flyers that would come in the mail or the, the catalogs or whatever, they would uh, go through there and, and circle the pictures. Any of you guys' kids do that? Maybe you did that. They would circle what they wanted for Christmas, and, and they would make sure that we got that and their grandparents got it, and we would know what they wanted. Well, <clears throat> you know, I got to the point, and I'm just going to tell you, after, you know, the Legos being on the floor and then playing with the toys for a couple weeks and, and then it losing it or breaking it or whatever, I, I, I seriously almost got to the point where I was like, Tiff, we're making our own catalog. We're going to, you and me, we're going to go around and we're going to take pictures of these pile of Legos. We're going to take pictures of the Buzz Lightyear with the broken arm. We're going to take pictures of the toys that they've forgotten about, and we're going to make our own catalog. And we're going to give them this catalog next year, and they can recircle the pictures that they don't play with anymore. How many parents know what I'm talking about, right? We didn't actually do that. We, Tiffany and I, uh, we, we've actually come into agreement because our older boys, they're, they're, uh, uh, one of them's a teenager, the other one will be soon, but we also have a three-year-old. And we've come into agreement that we are never going to introduce him to Legos. He is never going to hear of a place called Chuck E. Cheese. Like, we, we just, we're not going down that road again. T-ball, we're not doing T-ball either. We're like, there are just certain things that we learned with the older boys that we're not going down that road again. Like, T-ball is torture. Um, actually, this Black Friday, a couple days ago, I went out with the boys, and we were shopping and, and just looking around, and we went out to lunch. And when we got home, Tiffany had had the house all decorated for Christmas, and she made... Uh, cookies that we were uh, able to decorate, and we sat down, and we're decorating, and Israel, our three-year-old, uh, you know, he decorated his cookies, and we were finished, and he was eating it, and we were cleaning up afterwards, and he was just walking through the kitchen, and literally, like, out of nowhere, out of the blue, it wasn't prompted, he just said, hey, thanks, mom, for the cookies. Remember that? I mean, and it was so awesome, because I mean, it wasn't anything we were expecting. It wasn't something that we had said, hey, make sure you say thank you. It was like somewhere in his heart, somewhere in, in his little place of life, Israel decided to say thank you for something at three years old. It was so, it was so cool. It was so awesome. Because here's, the, here's what I, I hope we can understand this morning is that thankfulness, thankfulness is powerful. When, when, when we develop a heart of thanksgiving, when we live in a state of thankfulness, it literally can, can change everything. Look at this verse in 1 Thessalonians 5. It says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now listen, any time that we read in the Bible, for this is God's will for your life, Anytime you're reading through the Bible and you come across those words, here's what you do. You stop, you go back, and you reread it. And you make sure that you understand what God's will is. Because that's one of the biggest questions that we ask is, what's God's plan for my life? What's God's will for my life? And here's one of the places where God specifically tells us, here's my will for you. Let's reread it. 
Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. A thankful heart, is, it's God's desire. I mean, it, it brings pleasure to God. I mean, if any of you are, are parents or if you've, you've ever been thanked for anything that you've ever done, I mean, it feels good, right? I mean, to be appreciated, to be thanks. As a parent, I want my kids to be thankful. It, it, it brings pleasure to me when they're appreciative of, of what they have and, and what's been done for them. And, and, and God's no different. It's his desire that we would be thankful. And so let me ask you a question. How, how would an attitude of thanksgiving, how would a thankful heart affect your life right now? I mean, because the Bible says in the midst of all circumstances, one of the things that we should be is, is thankful. And, and no matter what it is that you have going on, and I know there's a lot of different stories and there's a lot of different things that you have going on in your life, how would a thankful heart affect your life right now? Think about that. What would, what would it change? What would it affect? Uh, what, what could happen? Because here's the thing. A thankful heart will keep us out of the wild, and it will keep us in God's will. We want to be in God's will. True? Listen, you want God's will for your life. You want his plan. A thankful heart will keep us in his will. We don't want to be in the wild. We want to be in his will. We want to stay out of the wild, and we want to be in God's will. What do I mean by the wild? What, what, what's the wild? The wild is the misunderstanding that God is not enough. The wild is the misunderstanding that, that everything that God's done and everything that God has for our life and everything that he wants to bring to our life, the wild is the misunderstanding that God is not enough. We want to stay in God's will, and we want to stay out of the wild. I mean, what's God's will? God's will is peace. God's will is peace in our life. It's peace in our heart. It's peace in our homes. That's God's will. That's his, his plan for your life, for my life, for our family's life. God's will is peace, but the wild, the wild is, is stress. The wild is stress. I mean, the wild is, well, I've got to be at all 16 Christmas parties this year. No, you don't. The wild is, I've got to get my kids everything that they've ever asked for. No, you don't. That's, 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 that's the wild. Listen, in God's will, there, there's joy. There's joy for your life. In the midst of all circumstances, he says to rejoice always. I don't, I don't know how except through the Holy Spirit sometimes that he's able to supernaturally bring to our lives a joy that we wouldn't be able to have if it were not for him. But there's a joy that you and I can live in. That's God's will. The wild? The wild's discontentment. I'm never going to be happy. This, there's nothing that can, that can please me. This, this, there, there isn't enough. In God's will, listen, there's, there's life. It's where he wants us to be. In the wild, there's, there's death. There's, there's death of passion. There's death of dreams. There's death of callings. There's death of giftings. But God has life for you and I. So listen, if being thankful, if being thankful is God's will, which, which we, know it, we know it is, then, then we need to understand more about being thankful. If if. if if it's God's will for you and I to be thankful, then we should have a better understanding of what it means to be thankful. So, so how, do, how do we slow down, okay? Christmas season is starting. Life's getting even busier than it already is. Everything's happening. How do we slow down? Who'd like to slow down? <laughs> Look around. Look, we're in this together. Look around. You're not the only one who wants to just slow down. How do we slow down? How do we, how do we breathe deep and how do we become more thankful. How do, we, how do we become more thankful? Here's the first thing I want you to write down. Think present, not presence. Think present, not presence. Look at this verse in Ecclesiastes chapter 5. It says, this is what I have observed to be good. That it is appropriate for a person to eat, to drink, and to find satisfaction in their toilsome labor under the sun during the few days of life God has given them. For this is their lot. 
Verse 19, moreover, when God gives someone wealth and possessions and the ability to enjoy them, to accept their lot and be happy in their toil, this is a gift of God. They Listen to this. This is powerful. Don't miss this. They seldom reflect on the days of their life because God keeps them occupied. Notice that word occupied. Because God keeps them occupied with gladness of heart. I mean, what would it be like, what would it be like to be occupied with a sincere and a glad heart? What would it be like to, to live in the present, to live in the now, and, and to, to not become consumed with everything that's around the corner and with what has to happen and with what we have to buy and with all those kinds of things? What would it be like for you and I to be able to live in the present, to live in the now, even here, even right now, as we're in this place? Listen, I know what it's like to sit in those seats. I know what it's like to, to be on that side of things. I know what it's like to when the songs are being sung and, and your mind's going a million other places and, and, and you're thinking about a million different things. What would it be like even right now to be fully engaged, to be fully present, to be fully aware? What would that be like? I mean, because it's possible and that's, that's what God has for us. What would it be like to be able to enjoy, like, uh, like it says in Ecclesiastes, to seldom reflect on the days of their life, but to be occupied with a glad heart? To seldom reflect on the days of life, all the things that you and I have to think about, all the things that we have on the calendar over the next month, all the things that we're consumed with about worrying what's going to happen next year. And Ecclesiastes is saying, listen, there's a way that we can live to, to where we can be present right here in the moment, appreciative and thankful for all that we have instead of being consumed with, with everything else that's going on. Listen, I, I, listen, people, your family, your coworkers, the people around our lives, they need you and I to be present more than they need our presence. People need our presence more than our presence. And so how do we become thankful over these next months? How do we, how, how do we, how do we live in the moment over these next few weeks rather than being consumed with, with the weeks ahead and the things that have to happen? Just, just realize this. Just remember this. It's more important. Listen, dads, listen. And I, I'm speaking to myself, and I'm just as guilty. Our kids need you and I to be present more than they need our money, more than they need our gifts, more than they need uh, the things that we're going to buy them. Our kids need to know that we're here, that we're listening, that we're available, and that we're present right there in the moment. That's what they need more than our presence. Now listen, we're going to buy gifts in our home. We're going to buy presents. I love the giving and exchange of gifts, but more than that, listen, my family needs to know that I'm present that when we're sitting on the couch, that I'm not just staring off into space thinking about all the other things that can, can fill and consume our minds besides them. Listen, am I the only one or you guys know what I'm talking about? Listen, they need us to be present. Listen, it's so easy as we're walking through the stores and going through our lives and, 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 and to just walk right past the people that we uh, inter encounter and interact with. And, and sometimes it's so easy because it's so obvious that, that they need help or that they're just looking for a little bit of encouragement. That they, they just want to see if there's someone else in this world who believes, who has hope, who has a faith, who, who thinks that, that better things are possible. People are looking for that, but they're, they're, we're never going to be able to give that to them if we're not present, if we're not aware, if we're not in the moment. So I think, I think together, man, we should, like it says in Ecclesiastes, God, bring me to the place where I'm not filled and consumed, where I'm seldom reflecting on the days of this life because my heart is filled with the gladness that comes from the Lord. Could you imagine living our lives like that? Where we're seldom reflecting, we're rarely even thinking about all the things that are going on in our life because our heart is filled with a gladness from the Lord. Now listen, either we believe, listen, either we believe that that's possible because God wrote it and he put it in this book or we think it's just like this wishful thinking. I want to be the type of person that believes that, amen? 
I want to believe that. I want to live that way. I want to experience that. So how do we keep our heart filled with gladness? How do we, how do we get to that place? Listen, we got to learn to, to look for ways to be thankful. We got to learn to, to observe and, and, to, and to find ways to be thankful. Like maybe it's just as simple as someone opening the door for you. You know, many of you, as you came in today, someone probably had a door open for you. If you came into this room right here, someone probably was holding the door open for you. And that's something that we can be thankful for. That's something that we can be thankful for. Maybe, maybe, maybe your spouse made you dinner. Maybe it's just any other dinner like every other night, or, but it's something that we can be thankful for. Maybe, maybe, your, maybe your kids rake the leaves. I don't know. This, this morning, it was so cool. Um, we had Christmas lights on on the outside of our house, and they were still on this morning. And uh, my oldest son, Eli, he said, hey, the lights are still on. And uh, I said, oh, well, we got to turn them off. They need to be turned off. And so we, were, we went outside to leave for church, and, and the lights were turned off. I thought that was so cool. Like, <laughs> I didn't ask him to do that. He just took the initiative. He turned the lights off. I was, I was like, wow, man, that, that is something to be thankful for. Thank you for doing that. It's so awesome. Listen, kids, may, maybe, maybe your parents, they buy you clothes. Your parents buy you clothes. They, they take you to practice. They give you gas money. They, 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 they help you with your homework. They, they bought you a bed. You sleep with a pillow. Listen, they let you eat food, okay? Listen, there's something that you and I can be thankful for. Listen, there's always, there should always be room to give honor where, where honor is due, okay? And there's always something that you and I can, can find to be thankful for. Listen to this, listen to this. Thankfulness can take up space that discontentment would be happy to fill, Thankfulness will take up all the room. It'll take up all the space that discontentment would be happy to fill. I mean, thankfulness just pushes out the consumerism. Thankfulness pushes out the selfishness with the, with the self-absorption, with, with, well, it's never enough. Self, uh, thankfulness pushes all those things out, and it, takes up, it fills all the crevices, and it doesn't leave any room for discontentment, for you and I to be unappreciative and unthankful. Man, let's develop a thankful heart. Let's be a thankful church. Amen? Amen. Colossians 3.15 says, let the peace of Christ, look, will you guys read that next word? What's it say? Let the peace of Christ rule. That doesn't just mean like, let, let the peace of Christ give suggestions. Let the peace of Christ make observations. Let the peace of Christ influence you if you want to. What, what does rule mean? I mean, rule means to, to have authority, to have control, to have the final say. Let the peace of Christ have the final say. Let the peace of Christ control. Let the peace of Christ completely influence your hearts. Since as members, as one body, you were called to peace. And look at these last three words, and be thankful. There's, there's a direct correlation between, between thankfulness, being thankful, and living a peaceful life. L listen, you want to you wanna live these next few weeks? You want to live next year full of stress, full of worry, full of, full of fear, full of all the things that, that are contrary to peace? Don't develop a thankful heart. But if, if we can become thankful, if we can become just appreciative and aware of all the things that, that others have done for us and what God has done for us, man, I'm telling you, there is a correlation, there is a direct connect between thankfulness and peace. Thankfulness paves the road to a heart that's filled with peace. You guys okay? Here's the second thing. So how, how do we become uh, more aware? How do we live in the moment? How do we become more thankful people? The first thing is think present, not presence. Listen, it's more important for you and I to be here in the moment than, than all the other things that, that this season uh, brings along with it. Here's the second thing. Think grace, not pace. I think this one, I think, I think we need to, to be receptive to this. Think grace, not pace. I mean, is there someone that you're trying to impress? Is there, is there anyone 
that, that you're trying to impress? Is there anyone that, that you feel like, you know what, I've got to keep up with them? Can you just look at your neighbor and say, I don't have to impress you? Come on, look at him and say, I don't have to impress you. Man, don't even act like that doesn't feel good. You know that feels good. I don't have to impress you. It's true. Listen, you don't have to keep up with your brother-in-law who buys their kids everything that they've ever wanted. You don't have to keep pace with them. Listen, you don't have to keep pace with that neighbor who puts up a million Christmas lights and then who puts it to music and then somehow he engineers the lights to, to cor- be choreographed with the music and it's all going. You don't have to keep pace with that person. How many can say, thank God to that? Now, I love it and I'm gonna go watch it, but I don't wanna be the guy that has to do it. You don't have to keep pace with all the Christmas parties and, and oh my goodness, they, they're sending out Christmas cards and I haven't sent out Christmas cards and they're, they're sharing cookies with each other and I haven't even baked any. Listen, you don't have to keep pace with all that stuff. You don't have to keep pace with that. I want us to watch this uh, clip from the Grinch who uh, stole Christmas because uh, Cindy Lou, uh, this clip, she asks a very interesting question. I think she asked a great question. So guys, watch this with me as, as they put it on the screen. We've got a snoozle phone for your brother Drew, and a snoozle phone for your brother Stu, a munkle for your uncle, a fan for your aunt, and a fan pie for your cousin Leon. So we just need Cindy. Cindy Lou. Merry Christmas. Oh, hello, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Fred. Excuse me. Cindy Lou, honey. Dad? Yeah? Doesn't this seem like a bit much? This is what Christmas is all about. Can't you feel it? Boy, nothing beats Christmas, right? I guess. I guess. <laughs> well, it's just a look around at you and Mama. Everyone getting all kebabbled. Doesn't this seem superfluous? Doesn't this seem like a bit much? I mean, when you think about all the things, man, that, that we get so consumed with. Listen, we don't, we don't have to keep pace Think, think grace. What is the grace that God has allowed you to experience? Think grace, not pace. I mean, may, may, maybe for you, it's, it's not a list of things that you want, right? I don't, I don't know many adults who, who are making these lists, and I don't make a list and run it over the tip and say, oh, you got to buy me this, you got to buy me that. I don't circle uh, things in a catalog and say, here's my Christmas. I don't know many adults who do that. Maybe you do, and listen, I'm going to extend grace towards you. I'm sure, right? We, we, we do have things that we want, but I don't know many adults who, who are filled with making these lists. But I, listen, I do know what it's like. I know what it's like to, to maybe have a list of people that you feel like that you've got to keep pace with. To, to know, to, well, look at what they're doing. Shouldn't we be doing that? Or look at the gifts that they're giving. Shouldn't we be giving that? See, I, I know what it's like to, to, to be there, and, and maybe some of you guys do too, but listen, we don't, we don't, have, to keep, we don't have to keep pace. Man, th- there's a grace that we can live in. There's a, there's a grace that we can experience. May, may, maybe, that, maybe that's not even that for you. Maybe there's a list of get-togethers that you feel like that you've got to be at in order to keep everyone happy. Well, if I'm not there, then it's all going to fall apart, and everyone's going to get mad, and, I, you know, and, and I've got to be at a million different things. And if I'm not there, everyone's going to be upset. Listen, can I tell you something? If that's you, listen, let this sink into your heart. It's not your job to keep everyone happy. It's true. It's not your job to keep everyone happy. You know, uh, Maybe, maybe this season isn't a time of like joy and, and just refreshing for you. Maybe it's just a time where you've got to grin and bear it, like just get through it. We were, I was talking with a friend this past week, and they had just had a conversation with someone, and they said, and it, it's, it was like, it's not even December yet. They said, I just can't wait till January. Just can't wait to, to get through this. 
Listen, whether it's Christmas season or not, there, the, yeah, there's, there's some especially difficult things that we experience living this life. But listen, there should never be a season, there should never be a time where, where our attitude, our outlook is like, I just want to skip an entire month of my life. Maybe that's what all of this means to you, and maybe that's, maybe that's where you're at, but can I just encourage you? Can I just say something to you? Listen, be thankful for the grace that God has for you. Allow that grace to begin to fill your life. Instead of feeling like you've got to keep pace, like as soon as Friday hits, it's like this gun shoots off, and you're at the starting line. You just got to go. And you're sprinting as hard as you can for this next month or for whatever it is that you have going on. Listen, you don't, you don't have to keep pace. Think Grace, listen, be thankful for the grace that God has for you. Philippians 4 says this, I have learned to be content. I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. God, give us strength. Listen, contentment is not, it's not possessions. Contempt, that's not what it means. Paul's saying that. Contentment's not possessions. Contentment is, is perspective. Contentment is, is living with this attitude, with, with a conviction. With a conviction. A deep-seated, heartfelt unshakable belief that, that God's going to provide, that everything that he's granted unto you is, is more than enough. That, that's contentment. Listen, may, may, maybe there's something around the corner that you're, you're concerned. God, that you're, you're a God who's able to, to meet all my needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That, listen, that the righteous are never forsaken nor their seed begging for bread. See, that's contentment. Living with this belief that, uh, not just a, a conviction that God is going to meet your needs every single time. See, but, there, but there's these things called worry. You guys know what I'm talking about, worry? See, worry, worry will keep us from trusting that there's something to be thankful about. Right? Well, if this doesn't happen, if this does happen, then, then that means this and this and this and this and this, and our minds go and go and go. And instead of being filled with thankfulness in the moment, our minds are consumed with worry. And worry will keep us from, from trusting that there's something to be thankful about. Or, or maybe it's greed. Maybe, it, maybe you do feel like you got to keep pace and you got to keep up and you got to meet all these needs and you got you to give what everyone else is giving and doing what everyone else is doing. Listen, that, that greed. Greed will keep you from, from believing that there's something to be thankful for. Well, I'll be happy when. Or I'll be content if. Or it'll be enough when. Listen, that's not what God has for us. That's not the, the place of contentment that he has for you and I. That's not that place of grace that, he, that he's come to give you and I. So listen, you can't, you can't be worried and thankful at the same time. You know that? You can't be greedy and thankful at the same time. So listen, we've got a choice. The space in our life is either going to be consumed with, 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 with appreciation or it's going to be filled with the enemies of thankfulness. The space in our heart right now, the space in our mind right now, it's either going to be filled with, with the enemies of thankfulness or, or with a glad and sincere heart. Instead of being consumed with, with the, all the things that go on in our daily life, God says, well, wait, wait, wait a second. There's a place that you can live in where, where you're experiencing a gladness of heart that only comes from me. And here's the last point, guys. Think reasons, not seasons. How do, we, how do we develop this thankful heart? How do we live and fully experience all that God has for us? Not just over this next 30 days, but in our life. Think reasons, not seasons. Think reasons, not seasons. Listen, seasons change. Listen, fall's coming to an end. Summer's going to pass. Spring's going to pass. This winter's going to be over soon. Listen, seasons change. Christmas is going to come and go. Christmas is going to come and go. It's 
going to be here before we know it. And then it's, the next day you're going to wake up and you're going to pack up all the Christmas decorations. You're going to put them away back in the basement. And that's what we do. As soon as Christmas is over, uh, the next day, we, man, we, we, we clean out the place and we pack it all up and we put it away. It's over. It's come and it's gone. I mean, do you, do you think that Jesus really just came to this earth uh, for us to develop uh, some compassion and generosity for a few weeks out of the year? I mean, if we live our lives according to seasons rather than reasons, we're, we're constantly going to be swayed based upon circumstance and based upon what's happening. So if we want to live in a state of thankfulness, if we want, if we want to see people's lives around us impacted, listen, we, we've got to think reason and not seasons. That, that the investments that we make aren't just about uh, to, right now, here, this moment, but man, what could happen if this seed's planted? What could happen a year from now? What could happen a few months from now? Listen, seasons change. And, and right now, it, it, it may be incredible for you. This might be the happiest time of your life, or this, this might be the most difficult time of your life. You might be uh, in the midst of just total difficulty, but I want to tell you something. Whichever one it is, either way, it, it's thankfulness that'll carry you through this season. It's a, it's a thankful heart that's going to that's gonna carry you through this season. I mean, you can, like, like that person said, I just can't wait till January. I mean, you can, you can just grit down and, and, and get through whatever it is that you're having to get through. But man, what if, what if we could live in that place where we're not consumed with, with the days of our lives, but where we're, we're living with a, with a glad and sincere heart that, that comes from the Lord. Listen, seasons change. Seasons change, but God never does. He's, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so the grace, listen, maybe there's a time where you experienced his grace. Maybe it's been a long time where you've experienced that grace. Listen, if that's you, if you need to experience his grace just by the power of his Holy Spirit, I just pray that right now that grace would begin to fill your heart, even right where you're at. God, fill our lives with your grace and with your compassion, with your mercy, with your, with your peace. I mean, think reasons, not seasons. I mean, do you ever just slow down and stop and ask, like, why? Why, 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 why all this? Like, why am I doing all this? Why am I, even right now, maybe, maybe you, your alarm clock went off and it's just Sunday and just going to church is what you do. But, but why? Why are you here? Is it possible that, that God brought you here this morning because there's something, listen, you've heard it a million times. You've been in church. There's something that God wants to say to you. There's something that he wants to do in your life. Can, can we be open enough and receptive enough to that to, to ask God why? Listen, why is a powerful question? Why is a powerful question? God, why? Why am I sitting here? Why, why am I celebrating Christmas? Why am I doing the things that I'm doing? Why am I going out and buying this? Or why have you put me in the place that I am? Why have you uh, put that person in my heart? Why have you given me the gifts that you have? Listen, why? That's a powerful question. Could we even just stand to our feet and just begin to ask God why? Listen, that's not disrespectful. Why, God? Think reasons, not seasons. Why, God? What's the reason? What's the purpose? I want more out of this than what I'm currently experiencing. God, I'm content in you, but I want to, God, I want to fulfill what you have for my life. I want to, I want to experience everything that you want to do. Listen to this verse. Just put your hand on your heart. Like 1 Corinthians 15, 54 says, when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But listen to verse 57. But thanks be to God. God, thank you. He gives us the victory through our 
Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, Jesus came. Jesus came to fill our lives with his grace, to fill our lives with his Holy Spirit, to fill our lives with his power. Listen, to have victory over shame, to have victory over regret, to have victory over sin. To have victory over the circumstances that you're facing right now that you think, oh, I just got to grin and bear it. I just got, got to get through to January. I just want this year to end. Listen, th there's, there's a place that Thanksgiving can bring you to. There's a place of peace. There's a place of Thanksgiving that can carry you through this month, that can completely change what this month looks like for you. If we could just live in grace instead of trying to keep pace, if, if we can become more aware and in the moment instead of just being, being present, not presence. God, would you speak to us and, and just answer the question of why? Why, God? Whatever your why question is, listen, God's not afraid of your questions. Jesus came, listen, with, with every eye closed and head bowed, Jesus came to shine his light on darkness. Jesus came that you and I might believe in him and enter into relationship with, with God. Listen, as believers, he came that, that we would shine our light to those around us. Maybe this morning you're saying, God, I want your light to shine on the darkness in my life. God, I want to know you. I want to experience you. I want to have relationship with you. I don't want to just have an understanding and an idea about who God is. I want to know you, God. Maybe you're here and you say, you know what? I'm, I'm tired of living life my way and I want to begin to live life God's way. If that's you this morning, you want to you wanna accept Jesus into your life. If that's you, would you just lift your hand up in the air and say, I want, I want Jesus in my life. Just slip your hand up. This is a way of saying, that's me. I want Jesus to be a part of my life. lift it up. There's no shame. We're not going to embarrass you. I want to help you take steps closer to Jesus. Let's pray this prayer together, church. Dear Jesus, I'm coming to you today and I want to give you my life. I want to give you my heart. I want to know you. I ask you to forgive me of my sins fill my life with your grace fill my life with your peace I want to fulfill your purpose on this earth in Jesus name